Welcome back everyone to Let's Play Advanced Tactics Gold, this is episode number 23. Just make sure my recording software is working, it is. Good. So in the last episode we conquered Fishhawk. We did a little bit of a... We employed Blitzkrieg is really what we did. We broke through in the, <clears throat> in the lines back here. And the armor poured through, through the lines, and went right into the heart of the enemy. Now the good news about that is we took Fishhawk. That's very important because... As we'll see, um, there's a lot of units, German units, who will start trickling back to reform the defensive line. And since we've taken the uh, solid defensive terrain from them already, uh-oh, excuse me, um, it'll be a lot easier for us to break through again. The problem is normally, as we'll kind of see even up here by Neem, when you're this close to Neem, they, uh, any individual is going to realize that the strategic objective you're aiming for is, well, in this case, like the city, so Neem, and they'll defend it heavily. And we're, the, we're close enough that they've probably already realized and have, a, they already have a huge defensive force in this raw, which is one potential strategic objective. So you can just imagine how much they also already have in Neem, which means makes these pretty untakeable um, without like a long slog, a long drawn out bombard, bombard, slowly attack, surround. Um, something similar to what we had to do in Coutants. We got Coutants um, a little easier than I expected, but they were able to you know, form a small front line against us. Now, the good news is these mountains and these, well, this mountain range essentially, and the rivers and everything is making supply more difficult for the French up here. And that's the idea is actually, if we can take the the like foothills of this mountain range, as well, along with the outskirts of Coutances and this forest, will have basically an impassable defensive barrier. And if even if they try to come through the middle or something, they're going to have huge supply problems. So, even putting pressure here is going to force their supply line um, in an in a bad way. So that's the idea: is uh, to get the defensive terrain quickly. We took Fishhawk, but there's like plenty of... I'm pretty sure... I'm not sure all of this is unoccupied. We apparently don't have very good reconnaissance on this stuff. Despite the fact that we have a unit right next to it. <laughs> that just shows you, though, that we don't really have that much in this hex. Because remember, standard light tanks only have reconnaissance of one. Which is also what a ranger or a machine gun has. But a group of 50 rangers, therefore has 50 reconnaissance, but this unit, despite its amazing combat strength, only has a reconnaissance of 13. So it's important to consider that even though this has a lot of combat strength, um, we have units with a lot less of them because they're so strong and they have a high attack stack, but their reconnaissance value is still only equal to one unit. So it's uh, not giving us much information over here. Now we do have a headquarters near the front. Uh, the, only, the first thing you should start with at the beginning of every turn is know what you want to do for your artillery bombardment. I know what we want to do in this case. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is a little bit silly. I'm going to waste an action point in a way because moving forward while there's a zone of control issue here means that I won't be able to move forward as far. But I'm going to sacrifice the extra 10 move action points um, on this turn to be able to move further next turn. So just being moving forward still means I have one less hex I need to move forward next turn even though I wouldn't face this uh, zone of control that this guy's exerting if I waited until after we eliminated him. So I'm going to do that at sacrifice. We'll see that it should only take 20 to move here but it takes 30 because of his zone of control but that's fine and now I'll, I'll still bombard him. I won't get all 10 rounds. I won't even get 8 rounds. I'll get just 7. But he's weak enough that I think this is a good um, like pay it forward type situation. So good. His readiness is down to 12 down to attack value of two. Uh, so that's that's good. I, I think that it's still a wise decision. Now, I've looked at it. This guy can't help attack. And this is the furthest in the back that we have, the first furthest unit in the back. So I'm gonna use him to attack and him alone because I want all the other people to be moving around. So we're sacrificing possibly a few casualties with this ranger unit to have more mobility with our other units. Hey, hopefully not too many. I'll take one. That's fine. I'll, I'll accept one. Actually, one is probably less than I um, anticipated. 
I figured we'd take a few more casualties. Okay, good. So now we have this is captured, but instead of having this artillery back here, we captured it with this artillery one step closer, which is good. So he'll be able to bombard next turn if he's needed um, a little bit closer to the front. All right, next thing we're going to do is the, uh, we also want to bombard here. I, I would consider moving this one forward as well. But I think this area right here is vulnerable enough, especially because we're defending in the plains, um, that I'm actually going to just bombard this unit completely with all 10 action points. Okay, we see that lowered it, their readiness by about half, which is good. It basically makes them unable to attack us on the next turn, especially because they had this unit card played. I don't know what unit card it is that gives your entire offense, uh, like your entire, all the units under your command, a huge bonus. It's certainly a card I would like to play. <laughs> My charge card only affects one unit, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're still defending the two breakout points from this unit. They definitely only have the action points to move here or here and do nothing else. We're okay, we're okay. It's just, everything's working well for us right now. All right, so we're gonna move this machine gun unit forward as well. He'll probably get to where this guy is, yeah. So this guy can move forward as far as he wants, which means we're to the front. Okay, so I'm gonna do the attack here. <clears throat> okay, so we actually lost a unit, which is bad, but <clears throat> the ratio is still gonna be way in our favor. 33 to one, okay. It's stupid that we lost even a machine gun. And I think what we're gonna wanna do here is push forward. Okay, let's attack this unit again and see what options are available to us after doing that. Darn it. So if we had eliminated all of them, we would have killed the headquarters, which would have been really nice. However, they, they were able to push back probably to here. It says we have enough movement points to move in. If that's actually true, it is. Okay, so we can actually take this um, suburban hex. That's massively important. We can move back if we absolutely need to, so it didn't cost us anything to move away. But this is a very defendable hex. We don't know if there's any units here, but at least if we can get here, we'll be we'll have two a really defendable point. These two hexes are very defendable. <clears throat> to compensate, we probably need to move some this machine gun forward. He can only get here. He can attack this unit, which is just a single armored car, but with full readiness. And again, anti-tank guns on the attack are not as good. So let's see. We have an attack of 600 versus a defense of, well, I mean, against artillery, it's only 200. But against 650 for all our infantry, I mean, yeah. Our submachine guns would fight at a penalty, though. What we could do is transfer these two units to our rangers instead. So rangers are going to fight very well against armor. Um, well, not well, but they're going to fight better against armor in the open plains. Only by the nature of that penalty, the submachine gun penalty in the open. Let me take a quick drink. Okay, so things are shaping up over here, though. I think we're going to need to do... We're going to have to move this guy in. I don't see any way around it. It's just territory that I'm sure they'll take back unless we take it. Okay, now we see that they, they do have a unit here. So we had to do that, which means that we really needed to defeat this armored car to push that back because it's going to threaten our infantry. So we'll do an attack. I actually think we should do... Oh, we can't do a three-sided... Oh, we can do a three-sided attack. Actually, we can do an attack here even. It costs 40 to move into either. The advantage of doing the attack here is it means we'll be attacking from a greater angle. Although we're attacking from three sides no matter what, or even just two sides if we don't attack with this infantry, attacking from um, greater angles increases your concentric bonus. I wish I could save and show you this, but you just have to take my word for it. Our concentric bonus if we were down here would probably be 10 or 20, but since we're gonna do this attack, I'm gonna go ahead and move here, and we'll see that if we do an attack on this unit, it's at 30. So 10% higher than it would have been otherwise. Even if I eliminate this unit, it's still 20 from only two hexes, which is great. And do I want to include these guys? I mean, they're only gonna fight at 75 because it's just pure armor. I think we won't even attack with them. We want them, uh, they're weak already, and we'll just take casualties, so let's just attack with the two armor. 
<clears throat> Alright, well, we lost a tank, and we killed four. Uh, not the best, not the best attack. I'm actually surprised we took such casualties, because I was expecting <laughs> to hold pretty strong. But that's just what happened. Uh, now, what we'll probably do is... I know this is a Fields Hex, but we'll probably transfer a horse and an AT gun into here. And an AT gun into this guy, because he already has the horse. And we'll move them both into here. So that will defend this hex pretty well against armor, because it'll have three anti-tank guns total. Yeah, I think that's what we should do. <clears throat> We're not going to attack these guys, so alright, let's begin shifting units forward still. Against armored car, this unit with the AT gun, it's probably better if they... <clears throat> They're going to want to be closer to the suburbans, so let's move them here. And let's move this unit here, although they also need AT. Hmm. Yeah, they probably need one of the AT guns. So we'll probably have to give an AT gun to this guy from a different uh, headquarters, which means the readiness of it will be a bit lower. But it'll still do some work, especially on the defensive. And we'll just have to be okay with that. And you can see that now our front line is really forming. It's, it's starting to make sense. <clears throat> Let's also attack this guy. I think what's going to happen... Alright. Well, we're going to bombard this unit just to make the attack a little easier. It's time for those guys to be eliminated. Okay, we uh, dropped down their readiness to 3. <laughs> Very low. And I don't know who we even need to attack from. I want to save this guy's attack for um, this guy. Actually... He should be able to attack both, because it should cost 50 for him to attack either way. Oh, it might cost 55 for him to attack here. If I'm not mistaken, their landscape is 30 into forest, but 35 into swamps. Yeah, so let's just make sure. Let me just do the math real fast. It's 45 to move here. Yeah, so it'll cost 55 to actually attack that. That means that this guy can't attack if we want him to attack this unit. Although this unit's really weak, we probably don't need multiple units to attack. But we probably, on the, in the same vein, we probably don't need multiple units to attack this guy. We we'll definitely have these three attack. <clears throat> I think this AT gun should also attack. Is there any point in attacking this unit? Not really, because we're hoping that these guys will fight each other. So let's just use this one. And we'll attack. We're below the attack stack. We have 40% concentric bonus. I think that's all good for an attack strength of only 11. Yeah, this is much more than... yeah. We're, we need so very good we lost three units and we killed a whole bunch 30 including five armored cars we'll definitely move the machine guns forward because there's no point in them staying well should we have this machine gun start moving down and towards the front here mm, there's something to be said about that where do we need our forces i think closer to fishhawk so let's move that one down and we'll move this guy also forward so we can attack like i was mentioning and we'll attack with both of these guys. Just to do some quick casualties. We only did two to one. I'm a little disappointed by that, but... Oh well. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't think we need to move anybody forward, too. <coughs> Got a real frog in my throat. Keep having to take drinks. <laughs> I think it's time for this uh, engineer to build another road. Sure, we'll do that. It's going to help all our units stay in good supply. That means I, I really I could move in here if I wanted. What's the better unit to move in? Probably the machine guns. I mean, they're really good in the forest, but they're also not bad in the swamps. Although they can't attack out of the swamp because the places they'd be attacking into are open. Maybe there's not even a point in us taking it. I don't think there is. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll think about it. We'll, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. So let's go ahead and do this then. Uh, wait, I, another thing I... Should I even try to take this hex though? Is there a point in moving forward? If we don't move forward, it's going to cost more for them to try to move over here. They won't have enough, for example, to move onto this hex because they'll have to pass through my enemy territory 
with the AP cost for them. That'll be my zone of control. And then they'll have to cross a stream doing the same thing, zone of control and in my enemy territory. We could hold here, which means that'll it'll just decrease the number of units they can attack me with, but that will that whole idea will increase the number of units that could attack this tank unit. Okay, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna move this unit here. I'm gonna actually move this unit here to help reinforce this open plains area, because we only have three standard tanks. On last turn, apparently I forgot to create oh, never mind, the tanks are now going over here, and I did create a unit for it. So let's do that, get the standard light tanks in there. Although we've been shifting all these north in anticipation of trying to push towards Neem. And I think that's where these guys will go as well. I'm actually going to hold off for a second. We might, it might be in our interest to attack this hex. So let's see how the artillery bombardment goes. We'll take our two best. Well, a few casualties. Lower the readiness a lot, entrenchment too. But there's still a fighting strength of over 70. And we'd be attacking over a stream. <clears throat> I don't think this is gonna happen. Yeah, so that means just go ahead and move the tank forward. We'll just, uh, we'll attack maybe that hex next turn. It's a little stronger. We should have attacked it last turn when it was weaker, but no use crying over spilt milk. We'll just move on. And we have one artillery here and two here. I think the best thing for us to do is to attack this one with both their artillery. Okay. And we still have one artillery left in the headquarters. Pretty good. And we'll attack this hex since there's so many units here. We should get an attack stack bonus. Penalty to them, which means bonus to us. Well, that's not <laughs> not incredibly effective, huh? We killed one unit and lowered the redness just a bit. But it's done. There's no uh, way to change it. We'll just take what we get. We'll move the four artillery and the four horses into another artillery thing. Now, just before I forget, I'm gonna create a new formation. And this is gonna be the next group of tanks because I think we still want to move tanks here. And two rangers. So that'll be for next turn. The readiness is a bit low, around 50, but at the beginning of next turn, that should hopefully be around 90. I just want to make sure that even though, like for example, this unit has, after being formed this turn, it still has a readiness of 80 for the secondary units. I want to make sure that um, by the time they get here, oh, so this is bad this unit I want them to be a hundred by the time they're ready to move from here so this unit currently doesn't have it as readiness of 71 and 75 if that unit has all hundreds next turn then mission accomplished but we can see that the first time we did it we just moved infantry that was already low readiness directly into a new division so its readiness was really low and that had a, um, a hangover on this turn that the readiness still is in the hundred which is gonna affect the number of action points and having them below 90 is actually just about the same as them having 80. So it's a pretty significant decrease. All right, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. Let's just start in the south and work our way north. We're not done down here quite yet, are we? I think we need to do a few transfers. So ideally we would get one AT here and one more AT here, but we also wanna get one AT here, I think. Do we even have enough horses for that? Yeah, we have plenty of horses. That's good. Okay, so we are going to start off the highest. What's the highest importance? Probably the two here are the highest importance. So this is definitely the highest importance. So let's transfer here an AT. Using land cap, of course. And a horse. And here, another AT and a horse. Okay, and this one already has the horse it needs, but it just needs to get an AT from somebody. So we'll steal it from, I think we'll steal from all the way from yellow. Because <laughs> this one still has five AT guns, and how many do you have? 
Just two. Yeah, so we'll steal another one from yellow. <clears throat> I hope, I think because we can traverse along the road, they can get all the way over here. You can see, actually, they can. <laughs> That's really nice. So I'll take half their land cap, but I don't think they'll be using a lot of land cap this turn, so we'll transfer one more AT gun over there. Good, so that just increased the readiness a little bit, but one AT gun at 75 readiness is still pretty good. All right, so we're set here. We have one AT gun defending here. We have one defending this one. So this unit is boxed in by AT guns, which is good. And it should also lose these um, bonus bonuses on the next turn. So hopefully they don't break back out. That would be pretty annoying. We know that their headquarters would be insane to move behind enemy lines. The worst case scenario is that this unit can actually capture this road. Now that doesn't ruin our supply. It just, actually, I mean, we'd welcome that because we'd just cut them off very easily on the next turn. Okay, so that's all the stuff in the south. Ah, yes, but except for this unit, we'll move forward here. And this guy will move forward. Oh, interesting. I think we'll move him just forward here, kind of reserved for next turn. And now we don't need to do anything else here. I think we'll leave the headquarters here though, even though these guys are starting to push the HQ proximity a little bit. And we really do need just another headquarters, but yeah. But it's a, right now it's, it would be too much too chaotic to create one. We'll do it soon. Okay, so these forces, is there any other attacks we want to do? Is there anything else we should try to accomplish? Yeah, actually these machine guns can still move forward. These can as well. Oh yeah, because we attacked here, of course. I think I will move the machine guns forward, actually. Um, maybe even both of them? Okay, I regret that. No, no, because this machine gun can move down. I want to make sure we protect this. Yeah, then in that case, I'll move that forward. Mm, this guy should support here. Good. This machine gun really can belong here. And then we can bump some of these rangers to open planes. Yeah, for example, we can shift the 23rd over to reinforce this area. Just because we are artillery, they would be better not to lose. And I think that's fine. Everything else is okay. I'm happy with the front otherwise. We still have this armor, which is chilling here. It's not helping or doing anything. I guess I'll move it one further. And that means this ranger unit can bump out probably to here. Which kind of sets us up for an attack on this hex next turn. Okay. Next, we have re and, and any other reinforcements? I don't think so, right? We got AT guns into all the things we want. Yeah, okay, good. All right, so no attack this turn, but we can bump forward here. It seems to make sense to do that. So let's bump forward here. Just keep pushing that front. This unit can even leapfrog ahead. But maybe, let's see what we wanna do over here. So we have this tank. Um, we have no artillery up here, which it would be nice to get because a single artillery barrage on this guy would be very effective, would really help weaken them, put us in a good shape to attack. However, they are in fields and we do have armor, so I think what we're going to do is attack anyway. I think the best thing for us to do would be attack, leave this guy because he's um, an anchor point. We don't want to lose him. We can reinforce this hex with this guy, like so, or I think that's what we'll end up doing. And then we can attack this guy from three sides. Now, again, we can see that the three sides here is only worth 20% because we don't have as large of an angle as attack as we did on the attack we did down here. But it's still 20% better than nothing, right? And we're exactly at the attack stack limit, which is perfect. Kind of like the ideal. I'm just hoping that this armor is really going to overrun the infantry and the infantry guns. Because infantry guns are actually pretty good. I mean, they do have some capability to defend against armor. So this might not be a good attack, but we'll find out. In the end, I think it was. 23. Yeah, so they we lost 8 rangers and a machine gun, but they lost 23 rifles and a truck, which is much more valuable.
remember a truck is 750 versus a ranger which is i mean a machine gun which is like what is it 250 270 i don't remember <laughs> let's find out i don't know why i don't remember this come on somebody's making machine guns 250 yeah they're 250 Now, who should move in and fill the gap? Well, I think just these two units right here. We could even do a follow-up attack. Is that true? Not from this guy, though. Yeah. I think we'll wait on the follow-up attack. And really, ideally, we would move... It would be really nice to have artillery in place to bombard this hex next turn. Being only two hexes away from Neem, I think that we're going to fight a very entrenched force here. Just like we're seeing in this raw. But... Hmm. Okay, so this guy can move forward. Since he already lost his entrenchment and he's a little bit down on readiness, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're still in supply, and this guy's going to move up to take uh, the fortified position right behind him. I think that'll be pretty effective. Okay, so now moving on to yellow. Let's see what goes on here. I think we'll double, we'll double bombard this hex. There's no reason not to, it's in range, and we don't really care about these riflemen. We would like to take this um, suburban hex first though. That'll help our, our front line. So let's do it. We have the 50% penalty against city units, but that's still pretty good. Huh. I thought the readiness was lowered by like half, but they're still at 46. Well, the riflemen are down to three, so let's just do it, because we can see infantry guns. They're pretty good against armor on attack or defense, but they're not very good against infantry on the defense. We'll just take advantage of that and do an attack. Actually, I think we'll attack with our city units because this is a city group, so we'll do that. It should help having the submachine guns in the assault. And we just destroyed them. 37 units, 36 units, I'm sorry, including two trucks, wow, and five infantry guns. Okay, infantry guns they have factories for now, but 30 riflemen and two trucks, very important. And we will actually, not, we're not going to move our, our city units in because those are better left defending croutons, but we will move these guys in and we can support that with the machine guns. So good, we've taken, we've taken the suburbans and the suburbs of croutons, and that's a very defended hex. Okay, so good, we're holding the forest line. We're actually getting our artillery down into good positions. In fact, this guy can move here at the cost of 50. That's good, I'll, I'll definitely take that. So we can do a double bombardment from these two guys that moved out. One of them is gonna break off after only five rounds. One, two, three, four, five. This guy drops out, but this guy will get all 10 in. Not bad. I mean, actually not that great considering they had a huge attack stack penalty, I assume, being way overstacked in the hex. We only killed nine. It's a little upsetting, actually. <laughs> I would have expected better. Oh well. We have one more artillery bombardment, which is going to be the same hex. I would... I mean, this uh, the hex that we're bombarding again must be so pockmarked by artillery bombardment. And not, uh, this one also was not that effective. Only killed five. I wonder why that was this turn. Hmm. Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, it's free, no matter, uh, any way you look at it, it's just free damage. Okay, so I think that's all we want to do on this turn. This actually has taken quite a while to do. I don't think there's anything else to do. We ta captured that. We push forward here. I think that's gonna mean we're conceding the fact that Neem is going to be a slow slog. So there's going to be a big difference. We can compare and contrast very easily the battles for like Coutance, which was kind of fast in the middle, for Fishhawk, which was very fast, which was total Blitzkrieg. And then we can compare that with Neem, which is probably going to be a real grind, like a Stalingrad type situation. All right, well, uh, the last thing we want to do is just do our transfers. So we have a lot of horses, but no AT guns here. So I'm gonna transfer yet another AT gun because it doesn't look like there's too many AT guns up north. So I'm gonna transfer two more 
using the Gray's rail capacity over to our Supreme headquarters. And now we should take a look at staff limits. This one's at 117, 95, and 106. So we need to get some staff into the central headquarters. Let's do that. Transfer some staff here. Just put 10 in, should be fine. Okay, you're now at 102. That's not that great. Let's transfer some more. Maybe another 10. Okay, 108, 109, good. And do we need to transfer any here? What were they at? 106. Might as well transfer some staff there because we're gonna get, the, the new staff are gonna arrive at our, our um, Supreme Headquarters. So we'll transfer 10 more down there. These guys are now at 112 and as long as these guys aren't below 100, we're fine. Perfect, we're completely okay. In fact, I don't know, have we already lowered our staff down? Our staff can probably be lowered down to 24 at this point, which is just gonna give us a little bit of extra political points. Now, I already did some adjustments to production. You can go back and pause that screen if you wanna see it closely, but we took a big supply stockpile hit because we had to upgrade all the machine guns out there. And it's probably time um, to, we, I am building up our supply stockpile a little more now. We don't need really political points for anything. The next thing I probably want to get is mortars, which I already could buy now, but I don't really have the production cap capacity to build them. <laughs> I was even thinking that the best way to deal with tanks is probably going to do a 262, two rangers, six machine guns, and two mortars, which will help these guys on the attack against, actually I don't, yeah, I mean, because the tanks are mainly offensive units and mortars are offensive units, so it'll just be a little more helpful for the tanks on the attack. Okay. This front is fine. Let's zoom out and just see how the world's going. It looks like Russia is making enormous gains on France, and there's still no conclusive... Oh, it actually looks like the Germans have cut off the... Soviets down here. Let's turn on hex coloring real fast. Yeah, so the Germans have pocketed a uh, Russian amount uh, territory here. That's good to see. We want everyone to do as much damage to the Russians as possible. They've taken one city and plenty of oil and plenty of raws because two more royal oils and two more raws I think they've taken. So they're not going to be hurting for any of the resources. I wish we could say the same for us. Okay, then it looks like uh, the Germans have taken now um, Laval. Oh, no, it's still French pocket there in Laval. And it can supply itself because it can produce supplies. That's pretty cool. But otherwise, the French are kind of collapsing. So we can see that their supposed advantage, starting with um, the extra city, has not panned out too much. And Germany's fighting just as well as anybody. Good. Okay, last thing I need to do before I forget is I need a headquarter fishhawk. Otherwise, whatever we produce there doesn't go anywhere. And on top of that, I need to actually get fishhawk to produce something. In this case, I want it to produce eight political points for us. Good. Okay, so next turn. The Russians doing something. And here we go. Are they attacked? I only saw two losses for us, so we definitely defeated that. Oh, they attacked again? They put a lot of pressure along the border. But we didn't move back anywhere, so I'm assuming those were pretty successful. Oh, wow. Whoa! Holy cow. They did reunite. That was incredible, too. The amount of losses I took were staggering. That was an attack on the French against the German. Wait, did I see that right? Let's go to history here. There was a battle down here, I think. So this is the beginning of the turn. We can see that it ended very poorly. Let's see how it did that. Okay, first they attacked my tank, the place I pushed up there, right now outside of Nîmes, and just absolutely decimated their forces. Next, they attacked the one right below it, which I moved up my new rangers to. So the old ones are here, and we took 10 losses, but we inflicted really heavy casualties, so that's good. Still five to one. That's about reasonable. That's exactly what I would like guess. 
So the one before that was like spectacular in our favor, but that was more normal. Okay, this is the one we lost. Ah, uh, man, see, 180 guns, just not enough, huh? We lost four machine guns, threes, 20 submachine guns, and a horse. And they were able to bust through. So that meant that they probably resupplied. In fact, for some reason, they didn't move their units out. Very confusing. Then they did another attack here, if I'm not mistaken. <clears throat> okay, so they did push out here. That's interesting. All right, the next battle was, yeah, the Germans attacking the French. They just lost two rifles. They attacked an armored car. I mean, whatever. Small fish. Not super important. I guess no other battles. Okay. Well, it's really simple. We're just going to, of course, recut off their supply. That's priority number one, is to make sure that that happens. Hmm. And this unit just cut itself off, which is really strange. <laughs> I mean, it didn't intentionally. It moved forward, but because our zone of control is so much stronger than theirs, we actually flopped this um, hex. So they cut themselves off. Well, I'm actually gonna put a cut in here though. I, I think I'll continue recording right away. Uh, I just, this video has gone 37 minutes already. So if I try to get in another turn, we're gonna be like up to the hour mark. Um, okay, let's start in the top and work our way down. See what we wanna do next turn, just to kinda, I'll let you chew on what you think I should do while I while I mention these things, and we'll see what I actually end up doing. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we're gonna push forward here. I mean, I can almost do that immediately, just I know I want to do that. I'll put our rangers in the mountains because definitely some machine guns in the open don't work well, and this is a very defendable, we don't even need anti-tank guns because it's gonna defend very well in the low mountains by itself. Good, so now this is a pretty sure line. In fact, we don't even need the machine guns here. They can actually move out because this unit is going to be able to defend very well in the suburbs. Now we're going to want to move this artillery probably here. It's possible that we'll leave one artillery with coutants. I'm not sure. I, I kind of want to leave one as like a reserve unit. Yeah, we can actually put one into coutants. Let me see. 61. They're both exactly 61, so it doesn't matter which one I move in. Good, then we'll just move this one in. And he'll do a bombardment of this guy. Ah, there's nothing else to do. There's no other people in range. So even if we kill one single armored car, it'd be nice. It doesn't look like anything is happening. We, we barely did anything to them, almost nothing. But still, uh, we, uh, hey, we shook a stick at them, like go away. Okay. Probably the next best thing to do is also to move these rangers into the mountains. If they're not supplying through this road, which almost surely they are, um, it'll put a lot of pressure on any units over here. And that's the place we want to hold, right? We want to hold the low mountain chain. We're definitely in supply here. I mean, we're probably in decent supply. Yeah, it only costs 68 action points for our supply to reach us here. So it's not so bad, but... It means that they, they would have to go through the high mountains to challenge my units here, which is just impossible. Coutance is now, like, completely safe. Same with uh, this machine gun, which can actually move pretty far. There's no armored cars nearby. They can't move through low mountains. Oh, no, they can. We see that they can, but it's at a pretty severe penalty. They would have to move here, and then here, and then here. That's pretty hard for them to do. Yeah, so we'll move our machine guns all the way forward. And we'll do the same with these machine guns. Actually, these machine guns we might move back and convert into a different unit type. So maybe by putting submachine guns in here, we can make it um, a new submachine gun guard or something else. But I don't like having just these lone operational machine gun units. They're not, they were never uh, intended to be a permanent unit. They were just a stopgap when I had only machine guns in my headquarters to defend with. Okay. I mean, it's just kind of clear for me what are some of the things we're gonna be doing here. Like I'm gonna move this unit forward here and it's gonna bombard here just cause that's the only thing it can do. 
So there are some things which um, I don't see any alternative to, which we, we can just do right away. We didn't really do much, maybe killed two units, that's nice. Free damage, you know? I will always take free damage. Over here, again, not much we'll do. I will, um, I won't move into this hex just in case, because it is planes, it's not even fields, it's planes. That's the worst case scenario. Um, we will do an artillery attack on this with both of these guys, that just makes sense. This is another hex, which I'm sure is just um, very torn up from constant artillery bombardment. And again, there's just no alternative. It's just the only thing that makes sense is to bombard here. Not, okay, that's a little better. Got a few jumps, but okay, eight more dead. Readiness is not that, it wasn't that high to begin with, but we didn't lower it very, by very much. And again, the total combat value in here is like 150, so that's probably beyond our beyond our reach from an attack standpoint. This looks interesting. However, we'll have to be very careful that there's um, probably some units hidden in this in the suburbs here. And if we were just to attack into it, we might be surprised. You normally do not win surprise attacks. Especially like armor, like I mentioned, they don't have that very they don't have very high reconnaissance. This one would only have 14 reconnaissance. Compared to a unit like this, which would have, you know, like 50 uh, three reconnaissance, so about five times better than this reconnaissance, almost. Uh, then moving here, the tanks might not spot that there are units inside of the suburbs, and I mean, because if your if your reconnaissance is only twelve, this has hide points of twenty. So <laughs> it's I think the way that works is it just subtracts twenty from your reconnaissance on the hex, and then you'd move in and they would get a huge combat boning against you. I don't know how it works, but I've never won a surprise attack that I moved into, and I've never lost one that they moved into me, so. Okay, but uh, this is clear that we're going to push in here. It's not even a, a question. We'll probably do a double attack with this infantry here and here, and maybe get this infantry to actually attack this hex. That would be nice. So we kind of broke them over here. Maybe Neem won't be so hard to take. Here they're still sitting pretty strong. We see outside of Plymouth, outside of Oxford, they've been, I don't know why, they're just about to be cut off by the Germans. If they were smart, they would just retreat back and start defending the border, but. And then we have Fishhawk, which, yeah. Uh, good old Fishhawk. Well, we've taken the city, so at least we're gaining the eight political points from it. That's the main thing. We're going to cut them off here. Probably move this unit here. Move this unit here. Probably bombard... I don't know. Do we bombard this one or this one, though? Probably this one. Just to kill off more units. And then we'll really clamp down on this hex. All right, well, that's all. Um, we'll just see how all those plans, the best laid plans of mice and men, of course. So we'll see how all the plans actually work out next turn, or in the next episode. And thanks for watching this one.